Hi guys, welcome to Studio Wildlife. Um, today I'm going to be talking specifically about how I paint the long fur of a lion's mane. Um, this is a painting that I started last year, but I've only really just got around to finishing it in the last month or so. Um, at least for us artists, we've got a lot more time to create these days. I didn't film the painting of the face, so I'm just going to be talking about the mane mostly, and maybe a little bit about the body and how I finish this painting. As you've seen already, I started with the ear, and the technique I use is largely similar to the way that I paint the mane. I blocked in the layers of the mane last year, but for the purpose of this video, I painted over them again to show you my process. I always start my paintings in exactly the same way. I block in a dark base colour with a fairly large brush. Um, for this painting, I'm using one of my favourite brushes, which is just a very old and very frayed round brush. I build up the darker layers and I draw out the shapes of the fur. I'm not really focusing on individual strands just yet, um, just focusing on the large blocks of colour and the shapes that they're in. Wait a minute or two for the paint to dry and then I add other lighter layers on top, breaking those dark blocks down into even smaller, slightly more specific strands of fur. At this point, I am using a fairly large abstract strokes that just about represent the long strands of hair. Uh, I start to add the details. Um, I've just bought a new sword liner or dagger brush, I think it's called, um, and it's actually perfect for painting the long hairs and the whiskers of the lion. It carries so much paint, so I don't have to keep on going back to my palette, and I can use it to add much more detailed, much lighter strands of fur. Once I've added those more detailed fur with the dagger brush, um, I can then glaze back over the ends of those strands to blend them in with the rest of the mane. And then I just repeat that process over and over again, um, lightening my paint ever so slightly as I go until I'm happy with the finished outcome. Once this layer is dried, I use a glazing technique, which is just a very thin washes of paint to add shadows and adjust the colours of the marks I've just made. Um, if you're using acrylic, it doesn't take very long to dry, and this is very quick. Um, but if you're using oils, you might have to wait a few days for the surface of the painting to dry completely before you can actually start the glazing process. Here are my top tips for painting fur. Um, if you're wanting a realistic finish to your wildlife paintings, it's really, really important that you add lots of variation to your fur. And um, what I mean by this is you don't want all of your fur strands being exactly the same length or going in exactly the same direction, um, which is what's happening in the little sketch that I'm drawing here. Um, even though it looks like tiger fur, it is very simple and quite boring to look at because of all of those strands are exactly the same length and going in exactly the same direction. What you should be doing is varying the direction and the length of those strokes. It gives those fur or that fur strand a slight curve, which makes it look more interesting, and make sure to randomise the direction of those curves. It's also really important that you leave some of the darker fur showing through. You don't want to cover all of it when you do the lighter layers. By leaving small gaps of that dark fur showing through, you're giving the impression of the layers that will be found in realistic fur. I know that was demonstrated using tiger fur, but the principle still applies for lions. Make sure that you have some areas of that blocking, those darker colours showing through, and make sure there's lots of variation in the length and the direction of the fur that you're putting down. Here, I'm just blocking in the back of the lion, um, it's not really specific to painting the mane, but I am using exactly the same techniques, starting with a darker layer and building up more detailed strands of fur in lighter colours over the top. So moving back onto the mane now, um, again you can see I've used the same techniques as I've discussed earlier. I start by blocking in the darker regions and the basic shapes with the round brush and build slightly lighter layers above that to refine those first strands. But again, I'm still just using basic shapes. 
Then I move on to using a liner brush to add some random strands of fur. Um, I'm using this instead of the sword liner because it gives me much more consistent width of marks when I'm roughly blocking in, uh, whereas the sword liner requires a bit more precision and a bit more time to get the marks that you need. Um, again, I use thin washes of paint and the glazing technique to knock back some of the fur and blend it into one mass. Sometimes when you add the lighter strands of fur, they look a little bit out of place, like they're just floating around on top of the painting. By glazing over one end of the fur and blending it into the fur underneath, you get a much more realistic looking effect and it looks like it's actually connected to the lion instead of just floating around on the surface. I bring back the dagger brush for those final details, making sure to vary the length of each of my strokes and slightly change the direction of each strand, giving it a slight curl towards the end to make sure it's as random looking as possible, to make sure it's as natural looking as possible. Um, after a final round of detail, a uh, final round of glazing and a little bit of repetition of those steps to finish off the hair, I'm about ready to call the painting done. One of the things that I find makes a painting most interesting to look at is variation. So I like to abstract my painting slightly to give the viewer a bit more to look at. Um, I use various tools to do this, but for most of my paintings, I find an ink roller spread out on some acrylic paint works perfectly to add those random interesting marks. If you enjoyed the video or you have any questions about painting fur, please let me know in the comments below. I'm happy to help with anything that I can. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more wildlife art videos.